Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today, we are gonna cook up some make-ahead breakfast burritos. These are great. You do the step once, you can make 12 burritos, and they freeze beautifully. I've tried it out. They reheat in the Ninja Foodi or in the oven. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is saute some breakfast sausage. Now what I have here is just one pound of regular breakfast sausage that you get in a roll. You could certainly use the links. You could even keep them in chunks with the casing on. You would just wanna slice them up fairly thin so that they don't become too bulky in your burrito. Um, but this is just some ground sausage here. So we're gonna turn the Ninja Foodi on and hit the sear saute, high is fine. You don't set the time for this. Hit start. I am gonna put just a little bit of olive oil, and you might ask why I'm gonna do that. The sausage does have a lot of fat in it, but I just want to get a little bit of olive oil in the bottom so that the first part of the sausage does not stick. And I think it helps to make it cook just a little bit quicker. So just a little bit. It's probably not even a tablespoon. All right, second thing we're gonna put in is our sausage. I'm just gonna dump that in and kind of break it up a little bit. I will use the mix and chop like I always do uh, for ground meats, but I'm just gonna flatten this out a little bit, get a little more surface area on the bottom as it heats up, because I haven't given the pan, uh, the, the inner pot, any time to, to heat up really. Okay, that's good. Put this over here. And I have one teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. And we're gonna go ahead and add that in with our potatoes in just a second. So let's talk about these potatoes. I'm just gonna grab some paper towels here. Um, these potatoes have been soaking for about an hour or so, and they are a fine dice, like a half an inch dice. You can check out my video on how to make fresh cut fries. I did the same process just after I made the shoestring fries. I just diced them up and I will link to that video right up there. So I have these soaking in water for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, I wanna remove some of the starch. Is this absolutely necessary? No. We're not gonna get crispy potatoes in here. That's not what I'm going for. But what I found is when you soak your potatoes for a little while, get some of that starch out, they hold their shape better in the breakfast burrito. So for example, I made these uh, about a week ago, had them frozen, reheated them this morning in the Ninja Foodi, and the potatoes were perfect. They were not like mushy or overcooked. They had a good texture to them. Um, so, and I think the trick is soaking up. So that's what we're gonna do here today. You can see the water is a little cloudy. That's from um, the starch kind of, you know, coming out into the water being removed from the potato. You'll also notice when you do this that your potato is pretty firm, and that's what we want. Okay, so I can hear the pot starting to sizzle a little bit. I'm just going to break up the meat and kind of turn it as I go to get it just to start to cook before we add in the potatoes. Okay, so we're chopping up our uh, breakfast sausage here. And I love using the mix and chop, and I will definitely link to that below. Um, it does a great job at chopping up the meat, and it is perfect for nonstick services like the inner pot of the Ninja Foodi. It won't scratch. So we want our sausage to be about halfway done, um, and that'll be good and give the potatoes time to just kind of soften. We don't want to overcook the potatoes, uh, so we want to wait to add them until the sausage is about half done. Okay, great, that looks perfect. And now I'm just gonna dump in um, these potatoes. So this is one medium-sized russet potato, just diced up into about a half of an inch dice. And that will be plenty to make 12 burritos. I'm gonna stir this around some because I do want the potatoes to kind of mix around with the sausage. When the fat is rendered out of the sausage, it's gonna help cook the potatoes and it's also gonna give them a delicious flavor. And now we will also want to add in our seasonings. So again, that's one teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. I'm just going to continue to work this around and then I'm going to leave it alone. 
and I will saute the sausage and the potatoes for about 15 minutes. I just want those potatoes to be just slightly soft. They don't have to be cooked all the way through because we still have another uh, couple steps here of cooking, but I do want them to be softened. All right, that's great. So I'm gonna leave these alone for about 15 minutes. I'll probably give them a little stir or two during that process. And then we will start getting our eggs all whipped up to go on top. So our sausage and potatoes have been cooking on high saute in the Ninja Foodie for about seven minutes now. So we're about halfway there. And now's a good time to get started on our eggs. Um, but first I just wanted to show you about the size of the dice there. So hopefully you can see that. It's about a half of an inch of a dice. I also left the skin on the potato. Um, I didn't feel like peeling it. If you wanna peel your potatoes, you certainly can, um, but I just left the skin on there. They actually add some nutrients. So I'm just gonna let that sit and we'll get started with our eggs. So I have 10 eggs here. Yes, you could use 12, a full dozen, no problem. I found that 10 gave the perfect amount for 12 burritos. So I'm gonna stick with that, but of course, certainly add an extra two, it won't hurt anything. So when we go to crack our egg, how many of us go like that and crack? I'm guilty, really, seriously, do it all the time. How many times do I have to fish out shells, whether it's with a spoon or with the eggshell itself all the time? I don't know, it's just this is what we're taught. However, that's not the right way to do it. So you wanna crack your egg on a flat surface. So we're just gonna hit it like that. Then right where the seam broke, Push in and pull apart. It's gonna prevent you from getting any eggshells in your eggs. And there we go. No shells, yay. I'm gonna give this a quick little stir here um, and then we're gonna to get to uh, whipping up our eggs. Perfect. So what I have here, again, is one teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. You could add in whatever seasonings you like. That's the beauty of a breakfast burrito. You could make it a little bit leaner if you use ground turkey. You could spice it up a little bit if you like Mexican spices, add those in, make yourself a Mexican breakfast burrito. Um, I mean, the sky's the limit. You customize it the way you like it. We're gonna keep it simple today with just sausage, um, egg, potatoes, and cheese. I'm just gonna use a fork, okay? We don't need to heavily whip these. Um, you can use a whisk, of course, but I'm gonna just use a fork. I find it to be easier and quicker. And simply tilt the bowl and gently whisk them. You don't have to beat eggs to death. In fact, if you're making scrambled eggs, stove top, or even in the bottom of the, of the Ninja Foodie, you don't wanna over whip your eggs. That's enough. All right, so just a few seconds and they're beaten perfectly. Now, I'm gonna give this one more stir because I wanna release anything that might be uh, sticking to the bottom. Even though it's a non-stick pan, it's still, um, you know, some of these things will still stick to the bottom when it's under this high heat. And then I wanna spread it around and I'm gonna turn the Ninja Foodie off. I'm just gonna poke one of these potatoes just to make sure it's soft. Just, just soft, yep, that's perfect, okay. Another stir as the heat kind of uh, settles down there now that we have it turned off. All right, that's perfect. Now the, the um, I can tell the heat settling down some. It's not, uh, it's not making as much noise and that's perfect. Now I wanna put the sausage and the potatoes all along the bottom of the pan. And I'm doing this because I don't really want the eggs to hit all the way down to the bottom because um, they will stick even though we're gonna do this on a real slow bake. I wanna form a little shield with the sausage and the potatoes and put the egg mixture on top. That's what I'm gonna do right now. So this is the 10 eggs lightly whipped with some salt and pepper. And you could add cream if you like, that's fine. All right, perfect. Now we're just gonna take a little bit of tin foil. The reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want the eggs on top to become rubbery. And if we just close the lid and do a slow bake, the fan is gonna keep turning and I'm afraid that the eggs are gonna overcook on the top before they're done underneath and get kind of rubbery and dry. And we don't want that in our burrito. So I'm gonna put this around, just gently tuck it under 
I am gonna poke some holes in because we do wanna get some of that heat down. Even though the aluminum foil will conduct the heat, um, a little bit of the air going through will help circulate. So I'm just gonna put about 10 little holes in here. And this little gadget is great. I use it so much with the Ninja Foodie. Um, I will link to it below in the description. It's a Pampered Chef product. It's actually a cake tester. So you test to see if your breads and cakes are done. Um, quick breads. Uh, but it also has the scraper on the back end and that's to release things from a nonstick pan. And I'm just finding myself using this all the time. I use it in the Ninja Foodie. If there's any burnt on food that gets up inside, I can just kind of get in there and get it off, so it works perfect. Okay, so we're gonna close the lid and turn the Ninja Foodi back on. We're gonna go to the bake roast function. We want the temperature to be 325 and we're gonna do the time for 20 minutes and just hit start and then let it do its thing. I'm gonna clean up here and then we'll get our station ready to uh, roll our breakfast burritos. So our sausage, egg, and potato um, mixture has been cooking um, at 325 for 15 minutes, and we're gonna go ahead and take the tin foil off now, um, just, just to get that top a little bit done. Because um, you can see it, I can see it set around the edges, but right on the top where we were protecting it from the fan and the direct heat is still a little on the runny side. So for the next five minutes, we're gonna leave the foil off. All right, so we just have a few seconds to go. I'm gonna just let it go through the cool down cycle, which just takes a few seconds, and then we'll open up the lid. Perfect. Okay, so what I can see is that the eggs are really, really nicely set on top. There might be one little, little bit here in the center that isn't quite done, but it's not gonna matter. We're gonna stir it in now, and it's gonna continue to cook with the hot mixture of the sausage and the potatoes. Um, I always recommend taking your pot out and putting it on um, you know, a surface, a heat proof surface, especially if you're short like I am. If you're taller, not so big of a deal, but to try to work with the pot up here is um, a lot harder and uh, more risk of getting burned. So I'm gonna move it down here and then put on my handy dandy heat proof gloves that my husband says I look like Mickey Mouse when I wear them, and it's okay. And I'm gonna get this bowl over here. I wanna go ahead and get the mixture out of the bowl because I want to start to air fry the burritos as soon as I roll them. Okay, so I have a clean cutting board here. Any kind of flat work surface will be fine for rolling the breakfast burritos. And I have 12 medium size um, flour tortillas. These are eight inch. I'm gonna just set one down on the cutting board. Go ahead and open this up some. We're gonna take out two scoops, which is about a half of a cup. You can see I'm gonna place it on my left side, if you want to imagine um, like a, this tortilla cut in half, you want all of your filling to be on one side or the other, you know, depending on how you want to roll them. But I'm going to do it this way. Um, so I'm going to put in two good sized scoops here. And then we're going to sprinkle with some cheese. Now this is just two different types of cheddar cheese that I have. It's about three cups that I shredded this morning. And you could certainly, um, you know, put in pepper jack cheese or any kind of cheese that you like or omit it altogether if you don't like cheese. I'm using about a tablespoon. I'm just going to put it there. And I'm going to turn my tortilla around. What I want to do is get this over. I'm trying to do it in slow motion. Tuck these in a little bit. And then when you get over here, use your fingers and pull it back. Okay, that's gonna make a nice, tight burrito. Make sure all this is tucked in here before we make the next turn. So I'm just gonna pull those edges in here, make sure it's all nice and tucked, and then we're gonna turn one more time. We have a perfectly rolled breakfast burrito. All right, so I'm gonna do four more. Meanwhile, I'm gonna preheat the Ninja Foodi on 375 on the air crisp function. 
So we're just gonna turn the Ninja Foodi on, hit air crisp, take the temperature down to 375 and the time doesn't really make a huge bit of difference but we're just going to preheat it now while i roll the next three then i cook four at a time just because i really like them to be on the top rack i don't want them to be stacked i want to get even heating and uh, crisping all around the burrito so we're going to preheat it i'm going to roll three more then we're going to get them in to cook So I have my four uh, burritos rolled up and the Ninja Foodi has been preheated. I'm just gonna take a little bit of olive oil and I'm just gonna brush all sides of these um, breakfast burritos. You could also use butter if you'd like. I just uh, decided I would use olive oil. Uh, that's what I used for the last two recipes and it worked great. Turn it over, get just a little. And then what, what you want to do is put it seam side down onto the rack. Just get this brushed a little bit. Seam side down. I love the silicone brush. It works perfectly for brushing any kind of food um, that you want to just put a little layer of oil on or butter before air frying and I will definitely link to that in the description below. Okay great so what we're going to do now is go ahead and turn this back on and the air crisp should be on 375 and we're going to go 10 minutes and at five, I'm gonna flip them over and get the other side crisped up. Meantime, I'm gonna finish rolling the rest of these uh, burritos. Oh, it's been five minutes here, so let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, they look so good. And we're gonna give them a flip. I'm using my fingers just because I forgot to get my tongs out. And I think that I have uh, heat resistant hands from all my years of cooking, but definitely use tongs. All right, perfect. Go back down for five more minutes and I'm gonna finish up here. Okay, so our breakfast burritos are almost finished and I'm just gonna let it go through the cool and I'll open up this lid. I'm gonna show you what you can do with the ones that we have not cooked yet. All right, there we go. Gosh, they look gorgeous. Now, I like mine really crunchy. Um, if you wanted yours a little less done, just bump the time back down to between seven and eight minutes, flipping at the midway mark. I'm gonna let those cool just a minute right on the rack while I show you how to roll your breakfast burrito in order to freeze them. So what I have here is a piece of parchment paper that I then cut in half and it's just to roll our flour uh, burrito in. Now, you could brush it with oil at this point or you could skip that step, it's totally up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush this with a little bit of oil, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna get it wrapped up and they'll be individually frozen for you so you can just grab and go. And that's the beauty of these make ahead breakfast burritos. So the reason why you wanna roll them in parchment paper before you roll them in tin foil is so that if you want them to thaw, so let's say you're gonna take them for breakfast and you're going to work. By the time you get to work, they'll probably be partially thawed. And so you don't want the flour tortilla to stick. So it's important to use the parchment paper or it may stick to the tin foil. And then we're gonna just go here, bring in these, edges just kind of like we did when we were wrapping those burritos bring them in and there you go now you can pop these in the freezer or you can put them in a in a ziploc freezer baggie and then just pull one out as you go um, either way is is fine or you can cook them and then wrap them uh, just like i did there and that's what we do a lot of times jeff will just take them already cooked to work and then he'll heat them in an oven because he doesn't have a ninja foodie he'll heat them in the oven at a low temp around 325 or so until he feels like they're they're cooked through all right so let's get one out oh that sounds so good all right Give it a cut here. I like to cut mine on the diagonal. I just think it's kind of fancy. Wow, look at that. Oh my goodness. Look 
at all the cheese and you can see the potatoes. The potatoes did not fall apart. That's partially because we um, soaked them before we cooked them. I can see the sausage and the egg and any little bits of that egg that wasn't cooked before is certainly cooked now. So you're definitely good to go um, safety wise with these. All right, I gotta let these cool a little bit guys because they are steaming hot. I don't wanna burn my mouth on that cheese. So meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these up, okay? Okay, mm, I can't wait. I see that one with the cheese and the crunchiness of this. Oh my gosh. All right, ready? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Extremely flavorful. I love this. And you know, I really like that the potatoes have, they're not crunchy or anything, but you can tell that they're there. It's not like like a hash, or sometimes they can fall apart. You can really tell that they're there. The flavor of the sausage comes through. Um, and the eggs are like real soft, like, like you just freshly scrambled them. So they're really good. I would probably add a little hot sauce in mine just because I like things a little bit spicy and maybe even onions and green peppers. But these are delicious just as they are. Be sure to add what you like to your breakfast burrito and give them a try and let me know how you liked them. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe at the end over there if you haven't already. If you already have, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And be sure to ring that bell to be notified um, when we put out a new video, which we are gonna be doing uh, twice a week. And be sure to check out our two Facebook groups. We have Ninja Foodie 101, where we go over more of the basic functions of the Ninja Foodie and offer a lot of support and help. And we also exchange recipes and ideas and tips. Or we have Ninja Foodie Fresh and Healthy meals, where we try to cook a little bit healthier with our Ninja Foodie, and we share recipes and support as well. So these breakfast burritos are super easy to make, and while they might seem a little time consuming, you're making them ahead. So this is preparing for breakfast for you know a week or two, in advance and so the time spent is really worth it and it's super easy they're customizable they taste delicious be sure to give them a try till next time bye bye Give them a try.